welcome to the Good, the Bad, and the Tarot. Happy to have you here. If you are a new subscriber, welcome to my channel. And if you're an old subscriber, thanks for coming back. Um, for your love forecast today, I am going to be using the Steampunk Tarot as my primary tarot deck. This deck is by Barbara Moore and Ali Fell. And I will also be casting the runes today. These are fluorite runes, which I've used in the past. And I will also be pulling one card from the Rumi Oracle. Uh, this Oracle deck is by Alana Fairchild and illustrations by Rizzoli. I wanted to go over a few things that are happening astrologically and feel free to just fast forward to the reading if you don't want to hear about them, but I think that they're interesting and uh, probably there may be some things reflected in the tarot, the tarot reading today that I'm doing for you. Um, Basically, the sun is in Pisces right now. It entered Pisces on February the 18th. Uh, we also will be having a solar eclipse in Pisces on the 25th. Or, I'm sorry, the 26th, which is on the new moon. And then Mercury enters Pisces on February the 25th. Mercury is the planet of communication. Um, then on March 2nd, Jupiter opposes Uranus. On March 4th, Venus is going retrograde and will be retrograde for, I believe, the rest of the month of March. Um, <clears throat> so it's not really a good time uh, to be entering into new relationships because those are even new contracts because those things will have to be revised after Venus goes direct, which I think is at the end of the month or maybe, maybe next month. Um, on March 9th, Mars enters Earth sign Taurus, and then on the 12th of March, we have a full moon in Virgo, a 22 degrees Virgo. And on March 27th, at the end of the month, we have the new moon in fire sign Aries, and we'll, we'll also be going into uh, Aries season. Aries will start to have their solar returns at the end of March going into April. So, um... We, all, we are also in eclipse season, so there are uh, lots of eclipses happening. We just had a lunar eclipse um, in Leo recently, and now we're having a solar eclipse in Pisces, which will be the last eclipse in Pisces for many, many, many years. So this means that there's a lot of change happening for us. We're shedding our old skins, we're detoxing, we're releasing things, people habits, beliefs from our life. Um, so it is a time of transformation and in the northern hemisphere we are starting to get ready to go into spring and in the southern hemisphere we're going to we're going to be leaving summer eventually. So changes in the air and uh, uh, I, I'm interested to see what happens in your reading, what the cards have to say. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I just wanted to share with you a few of these things that are happening astrologically this month of March. Hi there, Cancer. How are you guys doing? Uh, the cards are all sorted and ready to go. I'm going to continue shuffling on camera. And this reading is for all of my Cancer suns, moons, and risings, and those on the cusp. Ooh, the Wheel of Fortune just popped out. Nice card there. A little lucky influence. Alright, let's continue shuffling. Maybe it'll come out in your reading. Spirit, what are the love messages and energies that you have for the Sun of Cancer for the month of March 2017? This is their love forecast. What does Cancer need to know regarding their love lives? Spirit, love messages and energies for the Sun of Cancer. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Five of Wands, and uh, we'll talk about that card in a minute. Five of Wands talks about competition, though, fighting, arguments, 
uh, conflict. Sometimes it's creative conflict, though. Sometimes it's good competition. For example, you have uh, more than one person you're interested in, and you're not sure who you're going to choose yet. Okay. Cancer. What are the messages for Cancer? I'm seeing two runes here that are face up and ready to go, and then there are three runes that are face down. Now you guys know, well most of you know, I don't read the runes that are face down, it's just, those are the unknowns, we're not meant to know those messages yet. There are other readers that will read them, but um, I just choose not to do them that way, and there's some ancient practitioners that, you know, they don't read the runes that are face down either. Okay, let's take a look at your cards. Knight of Swords in reverse, crossed by the star. Okay, very nice. I think this was right here. Uh, okay. I don't remember where exactly that was, but it was right over there. You have the Seven of Pentacles, what comes below you. I'm sorry, maybe the cards aren't showing up. It's a little bit late here. I'm recording a bit later than I normally do. What comes above you, we have the lovers in reverse. Recent past, we have the queen of cups. Near future, we have the page of cups. How you see yourself, you have the eight of wands. In your environment, this is also how your significant other or the person that you're thinking about the most right now may be viewing you, may be viewing you or dealing with you. They have the King of Swords in reverse. Okay, your hopes and fears are the Six of Pentacles, and your outcome for the month of March is the Tower in reverse. <laughs> uh oh. Well, nothing short of an, a roller coaster this month, Cancer. Which doesn't surprise me because maybe because you're a water sign, you're a little bit more susceptible to the Neptunian Piscean energy going on. But at the bottom of the deck, we do have the Five of Wands. Okay, so it's possible that you were taking a break and now you're back at it, looking for uh, a fight, <laughs> spoiling for a fight. Um, no, but this is the underlying theme or challenge of your reading. And the Five of, Wand Five of Wands really talks about arguments, petty hassles and squabbles, perhaps not seeing eye to eye with your partner. Or if you're just dating, you may have many... Um, people competing for your affection, and you're just not sure who you're gonna choose yet. So just have to see how the, the cards play out here, but you do walk into the month of March with the Knight of Swords in reverse. Can you see that? Excuse me. So the Knight of Swords uh, in reverse is someone who is holding back. They may know what they want, but they're uh, not being very direct, um, biting their tongue. Okay, so you may be holding back on, a f I've actually got the uh, Manus rune here, this is female. Um, you also may be dealing with an Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini here, um, because I'm seeing an Aquarius card, the star crossing you. And um, this is actually really beautiful, uh, the star crossing you here as your challenge plus what's helping you or hindering you. And the star, um, let's see, it was like this. So it is actually in reverse. But, so you may actually need to be opt more optimistic about your approach, Cancer. Because when the star is reversed, it's saying that you're being, your, your issue, your challenge is not to be pessimistic or skeptical. It's to have hope and to have faith. Um, you know, there's a star out there in the sky guiding you. That's your North Star. Um, it's also that uh, faith and hope that the universe is always providing you with lessons and opportunities to help you grow. It's not trying to, you know, put you down in any way. It's not trying to, to make you have a horrible life. Um, the star is all about just having faith and hope and um, trusting that all will be well, all is going to work out in the end. 
So you may be holding back a little bit. Um, if you're a female watching this, there may be some skepticism getting in your way of pursuing something or, or, or you know, going after someone that you're interested in. And we have another little rune here, Jira, success. And <clears throat> so it's kind of the feeling of like you're maybe getting in your own way a little bit, Cancer. Uh, because I feel like you have every opportunity here. You you have even um, the your angels and spirit guides on your side, saying that it's okay to to feel safe to move forward uh, in this situation. But um, I'm getting the sense that because I'm looking at your foundation that you are dealing with maybe a sense of having failed in some area of your life. Now it could be a financial situation where you're just not you're just not coming up with the funds that you need um, or you just you aren't getting uh, you aren't seeing progress here you aren't seeing results. Uh, whereas you have made an investment in someone or in, in your love life maybe you feel like you've been working really hard at something and you're just not seeing uh, the results of your efforts. At least that's how you're feeling. And that may be why you're hesitant to move forward towards this object of your affection. Or you may be holding back in some area of your life here. Um, I also say that the Nine of Swords is someone who really jumps to conclusions a bit too fast. Um, likely, and they may be speaking before they think. So you do need to be careful about your words and how your speech and how you're communicating with others. Um, but I, I do get the sense that some of you are feeling a little bit like you're not getting a good return on your investment. Okay. In the recent past, we do have your energy here with the Queen of Cups. Now this could also be another sign. It doesn't have to be Cancer. It could be Scorpio, Pisces, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. But... The Queen of Cups is very lovely and she's very focused on love. And what she's saying in your recent past is that um, maybe you did offer your cup to someone, but it did come with some rules and it did come with some requirements. It's a very mature love, a very compassionate love. Um, she's also someone who, I would say understands the realm of emotions better than others. She's very focused on her heart. It's a very heart-centered card, this court card. So this could be a female in your recent past that maybe you're um, currently losing hope in, or if you are uh, a male watching this, this what might have been uh, someone in your past here. But um, Jira is saying that you have uh, success on your side, that you would be successful if you moved forward. What you're thinking and feeling, what you know to be true, you have the lovers in reverse. So this is some kind of unrequited love situation um, where your head and your heart are not in agreement. This could be um, a breakup with a soulmate. You may be feeling a karmic split here with your soulmate and uh, this is a just really very bad it's it's I don't want to say like it doesn't feel like uh, you were incarnated to be with this person it seems like you guys were torn apart at the seams here but I, it doesn't diminish the power of this of this love situation. Now this can also say that you were unable to choose. You were unable to choose between two people. You could not make the choice here. And uh, one of you, this is an unrequited love situation. Now um, this is also the sign of Gemini. So some of you are uh, having difficulties in a serious partnership with a Gemini and there's a lot of fighting going on. Uh, the good news is that in your near future, I would say in the middle of March, so one to two weeks forward, you have the Page of Cups. So this is a love message and a gentle energy as well. Um, now the Page of Cups is like puppy love, so it isn't a mature love. 
but it is saying that you're likely to receive a love message um, and um, it is a romantic energy it's a very light-hearted light-hearted energy as well now this could also represent you cancer moving forward just being more flirtatious being kind of funny and um, uh, charming but in conjunction with the eight of wands here this is how you see yourself you're, I see you actually with the arrows of passion here. So you're likely the one sending off these communications to someone else. You may be flirting with someone or just sending uh, lots of lighthearted messages towards the middle of March. Um, either way, this is a pretty good combination here. Now in your environment, we have a king of swords in reverse. This can be a Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius ma masculine energy, but it also can represent someone who's very cold-hearted and um, mean, cruel. Uh, someone who has maybe cut you out of their life or has um, been quite violent in their actions or tone of voice towards you. Very aggressive person. Um, and I see that you are maybe sending this person messages and maybe they are... Um, being very stern with you or very detached emotionally. I'm not getting anything from this person at all that's very good. So perhaps uh, this is someone like your, an enemy that you're dealing with here that's unrelated to the Page of Cups up here that I'm seeing. So um, in your hopes and fears, you have the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Your fear is that this would, that there's some kind of relationship here where it's une uneven, the giving and receiving aren't e even. So for example, you give and give and give and give to this person, but they never reciprocate at all. Um, the true meaning of this card is to withhold affection or its absence of generosity. So this is definitely not a hope, it is a fear. But of course, as a fear, it's not saying that that's actually going to happen. It's just saying that something you are afraid of. What you need to do is release that fear, realize that it's just a uh, projection and it has no bearing over reality in your life at all. In fact, I'm, I'm saying no to that card for you. I don't want that for you. I want good things for you. Your outcome for the month of March is the tower in reverse. And so this is a little bit of a shakeup. Um, now, this can indicate that uh, there's a little bit of an argument or a fight here, and it just rattles your foundation a little bit. So the, the rumbles are starting to, there's a little something here that's, that's, in fact, you know what, I'm gonna put down one more card, because that's a pretty major card there. Okay, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse. The fool in reverse. Okay, so this can be some kind of reckless behavior or someone who is ready to give up on something because they're losing strength here with the Nine of Wands. Um, and it's also saying that you're maybe afraid to uh, trust again, you may be afraid to take that leap of faith. So the Tower is also a guidance message for you. It's saying that. Something in your life has to change. You're starting to get warning signs. Maybe it's that you're getting very stressed out at work. It could be that in a relationship, you're just uh, fuming and you need to let off steam. But um, it's saying, how do you? How are you dealing with that? Um, are you feeling very worn out? Are you feeling like you have nothing left to give? Um, perhaps you feel like you need a fresh start, but you aren't sure how to do that possibly taking some space if you are in a committed relationship, possibly spending some time apart or um, working with a marriage counselor, or working with a therapist. I'm just throwing things against the wall here. I'm not saying that that's actually what's, what's happening, but I do feel like someone is very exhausted and uh, it could be stress related. It could also be that there's mounting pressure here and you do need to kind of uh, shake things up a little bit to get a different outcome. But uh, there's a lot of either reckless behavior going on or someone who is afraid to take 
a leap of faith who's afraid to trust and they're very distrustful of their partner for some reason. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have no doubt that this will be resolved. Um, it's just saying that you do need to, to shake things up in your world a little bit. And I'm sure you're already aware of this because if you're resonating with this reading and you watch this far, then I'm, I've gotten something right here. Um, so just use your intuition with what that could be. Otherwise, your reading looks really good. I just think that there's someone in your environment here that um, <clears throat> I don't mean to say that they wish you harm, but uh, someone who's a bit, uh, maybe a little bit judgmental or a bit cruel with their words. And for someone who's very sensitive like you, like a cancer, that can't be good. <laughs> you need someone who's going to be loving and kind to you, what you deserve. And of course, this can be how they're viewing you or dealing with you. Um, if you are um, not careful with you know, how you approach people and how you say things that can come off as hurtful. So it's just also saying just be careful how you speak to people. Um, if you get upset very quickly, being called to this card, the cloak of Christ. Well, I just like to remind you that I am not affiliated with any religion. Um, in fact, tarot is a pagan art, but um, some of these cards, I will just... I pre-warn you that, that some of these cards do have some, uh, I wouldn't say religious, it's a spiritual, they're all spiritual uh, messages here, so take it with a grain of salt, and um, we'll, we'll talk about it, we'll talk more about it. Okay, the Cloak of Christ, that is card four. So... If you're not familiar with these messages, they are a little long, um, approximately five to ten minutes for me to read through it. And I am being very thorough with these readings because I, I, well, they're the love forecasts, of course, have to be thorough. So if you don't want to listen to the whole thing, at least listen to the beginning. In the school of humanity, when you become an intimate with God, you reside on the king's throne and teach the angels the nature of the divine. Rumi. My sacred brother, he who shares my heart and yours, beating as one in harmony with the great unending love, brings you the mantle of his protection. Do you imagine that there is any part of your life, of your body, of your soul, that is outside the realm of his divine love and protection? Offer all to him, leaving nothing cast aside. He and I together receive you absolutely, without condition now. The compassion born out of our own struggles tempers the karmic weight of divine justice. We have been through the same journey you are taking now, sweet divine soul. In oneness with the divine heart, we know of your efforts and your struggles. So what is bestowed upon you now is the restoration of forgiveness, of kindness, of mercy. My sacred brother speaks to you. He shall receive your darkness and your light, the angel of your heart and the demon of your fear. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nothing is greater than my brother's love for you. Nothing is greater than my holy passion for you. Take refuge under the cloak of Christ, the mantle of my sacred brother, and know that you are held in our loving sanctuary. You are tired, beloved. Your soul has been ravaged, inside and out, and you are succumbing to struggle that is not karmic or necessary, but a symptom of fatigue and weariness of heart, mind, body, and soul. That which plagues you, whether something specific or a general nagging malaise or anxiety you cannot quite pin down, is not as powerful as you fear. You are being given a grace here and now, that it may be overcome. 
Remember, your, your reactions are a symptom of your exhaustion and a sign that you need respite, sanctuary, restoration. They are not a sign that something must be done so much as a sign that something must be received aloud. That something is healing made possible through divine protection. In this instance, protection is bestowed through the cloak of Christ. This cloak is a sacred container that places your body and soul within the loving energy of the Christ consciousness. This unconditionally loving energy is not limited to the being bearing its name, but is shared by Rumi and many other holy ones. It is typified by wholeness. There is nothing within you that would cause the Christ to turn away from you. Not even those parts of you that may fill you with fear, shame, guilt, or regret. He and Rumi are sacred brothers, loving and supportive of each other, and they see your soul as one of their family, one of their own. You are so loved by them both, equally and without measure. Can you allow yourself to take refuge in this knowledge? To feel it, not only as an idea, nourishing as that is, but as a visceral reality where you complete the sacred honoring ritual and allow yourself to feel the peace and, receiving, and receive healing. The knowledge of the Christ's unconditional love for you is a safe place, a place to fall into when you are struggling. It is a sacred container for your healing process an energetic field that is stronger and more enduring than even the greatest fears or doubts. The purpose of this sacred container is to provide you with the feeling of being held, especially for those times when you are feeling that you cannot hold yourself. Sometimes we just need permission to break down, to really let go, to come apart and be dissembled so that we can break through, be lifted up, and come together in a new, more spiritually coherent and loving form to move forward. For you, this is essential. There is a person, place, thing, or belief that has come to be like a manacle, monocle, around your wrist, or an iron ball and leg iron preventing you from moving forward with the grace you have earned spiritually. You are being empowered here to shed that. Don't hesitate. Let yourself be cloaked in the Christ energy and receive the spiritual assistance you deserve now. There is a reason for this. The unfolding of your life purpose is taking a turn for the better. Remember that Wheel of Fortune card that popped out while I was shuffling? And your energy is required to fuel that new life. Right? The unfolding of your life purpose is taking a turn for the better and your energy is required to fuel that new life. This is particularly so if you have also drawn the oracle of passion for purpose or intuitively feel drawn to read the message of that card and complete its accompanying sacred honoring ritual. Well, we haven't pulled that card, but don't worry about that. Just remember that whenever we are asked to release something, it is because the divine wishes to fill our hearts and hands with more. Do not hold on to scraps for fear that the feast will be denied to you. Use your nose. Smell the feast awaiting you. Sacred Honoring Ritual Open your arms wide above your head and, and uh, tip your gaze gently up towards the heavens. If you are inside, imagine or intend that you can gaze upon the physical structure of the ceiling right into the sky that lies above. Lower your arms to prayer position at your heart and say aloud, if possible, Rumi and Jesus Christ, who love me without condition, offer me the cloak of the Christ, the mantle of div divine protection now, that I may receive the karmic grace and healing I need through the power and mercy of your presence. Thank you. Sit quietly and imagine you are surrounded by a dark, comforting cloak. You can easily breathe through it. 
You can easily see light within it or filtering through it if, it, if needs be. Or you may feel comfortable in the darkness. Let it be whatever is most relaxing and soothing for you. You may even imagine it to be the night sky dappled with stars wrapping around you. Close your eyes and relax now for as long as feels good. That may be for a minute, for 15 or 20 minutes or longer. Just be with what feels appropriate and best for you at this time. When you feel you are ready to arise from your rest, simply place your hands at your heart and say thank you. You may notice strong energetic sensations or emotions during this process or in the day following. You may notice repetitive thought patterns that you need to confront and challenge with more loving thoughts. You may have significant dreams in the evening following also. It may be very subtle for you, so much so that you wonder if anything has happened and if it has worked. It has. The effect will be demonstrated at the right time. Trust. So I, I really feel this message so strongly connected to your reading and I see it in uh, a lot of places actually. But the most important thing is that you needed to hear this. It came at the right time for you. So please let me know if you resonated in the comments. And if not, do just take this time to do the sacred honoring ritual and allow yourself to feel comforted by the presence of a divine being or whatever it is, whoever it is you believe in. Um, here we have the cloak of Christ, so maybe it is Jesus or wh whoever your religion is. If you aren't a religion, then just believing that um, you are protected at this time and you don't need to worry. Um, just trust and have faith. Thank you so much for joining me, Cancer. I know this was a long message. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You're probably one of maybe a handful of people. So uh, I send you off with many blessings, love, and light. Take care. I hope you guys have a wonderful month of March.